we will once we will take up the next high yielding topic median nerve after that we will take few questions on the quiz we will take the uh, the second common high yielding topic is median nerve <coughs> once more median radial ulnar musculocutaneous axillary if you take past 15 years of all india aims nearly around 20 times median was asked least asked was only three times axillary right so in exam if you are confused which is the out of these four nerves you put median chances probability is higher that your answer will correct will go correct so let us uh, look into uh, the median <clears throat> so what is the root value is the challenge doctor <clears throat> right c5 to t1 it is the medial and lateral cords of the brachial plexus from which the once more brachial plexus there is a pain what are the branches of the posterior cord, medial cord, lateral cord, etc. We will take up, that is also a high yield topic, brachial plexus. So, it is called laborer's nerve. So, it runs along the anterior medial aspect of uh, the arm and at the elbow while passing through the cubital fossa, what is its relation with brachial artery is the favorite question of the examiner. Typically, it lies medial to the brachial artery, M4U. So, it lies medial to the brachial artery. Then, in the arm, it has no branches, thank God. Then, it passes to the cubital fossa, deep to the uh, bicipital eponeurosis. It is not superficial, it is deep. That is also another common question in the exam. And there it lies medial to the brachial artery. Now, doctor, median nerve is a, a Torabora nerve. Torabora caves you have know in Afghanistan. So it keep passing like a Bombay Pune tunnels. It passes through so many tunnels of muscles and comes out. So there can be compression of the median nerve which can occur between these muscular tunnels. So, that is the reason which muscles ke beech be a bahar niklega is one of the common questions of the examiner. Now, let us see how does it basically pass. Pronit arteries has got one humeral and a ulnar head. It passes between the two. Right? Then, the flexor digitorum superficialis and digitorum profundus are trying to court like the lovers in a park. Suddenly it passes between the two and then it comes out superficial and then between the tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis has got a multilateral friendships. One it is very close to profundus, other is it is also close to flexor carpi radialis also near the wrist. So, between the two it will pass and tell, interrupt their romance. So, there are three muscle tunnels between which it will be passing is what need to be remembered. Now, doctor, what are the branches? In the arm it does not give any branches, but in the forearm, in the cubital fossa, it gives rise to anterior interosseous nerve is a branch. So, if there is an anterior interosseous, there should be partial interosseous, it should be branch of radial. Excellent. So, what are the three muscles that it supplies? In the forearm, flexor digitorum profundus, pronator quadratus, flexor pollicis longus and it supplies a lot of twigs, sensory twigs to the wrist joint. In fact, most of the forearm muscles are all by the median nerve. So, all the anterior muscles of the forearm are all innervated by the median 
except the flexor carpi ulnaris and the ulnar half of the flexor digitorum profundus. Now, once it reaches the palm, it passes to the carpal tunnel. It is one of the important component of it. And there it passes deep to the flexor retinaculum is what need to be very clear about. Now, when it is passing underneath this flexor retinaculum, there it will be giving off a muscular branch, a recurrent branch, which will go and supply all the thenar muscles. Which muscles in the thenar abducted pollicis brevis? Because the abducted pollicis longest is supplied by radial, right? Then flexor pollicis brevis, opponent's pollicis, they are all by the median. Finally, doctor, it will be dividing into three common palmar digital nerves and gives rise to palmar digital branches. Any entrance you go, what is the sensory supply of the palm? Right? Is the favorite question of the examiner. What are the territories which are called the unique territories of the median nerve, which are the unique territories of ulnar nerve and radial nerve? You have to be sure. So, doctor, this is the typical, one of the very classical schematic I could discover. So, this is an exclusive area. This is radial side or uh, medial side? Radial side, because it is towards thumb now. So, 1, 2, 3 and half counted from radial side is all exclusive territory. Then, typically it is also in this area in the palm which is supplied by it, then in the posterior aspect what is it supplying fundamentally? You can count on the, once more, 1, 2, 3 and half on the dorsal aspect is once more exclusive area supplied by the median nerve, the digital branches of the median nerve. So, 3 and half fingers is what we need to remember lot of times in the reading room. Reading room, what we will do? I don't know what you do, but what we used to do is 70 percent sleep. Uh, and we used to have a couple of guys to tell when we are snoring. So, uh, when you wake up, what will happen? You will get numbness. Are you going to reading room and getting that numbness or not? So, that is all called academic orgasm. Ah, sufficient. We slept sufficiently enough. Let us at least get up and read. If you didn't sleep until you get numbness in the reading room, you have not justified paying money for an air conditioned reading room. Right? So, when you get numbness in reading room, it is typically an ulnar distribution. It is the medial one and half fingers, which typically will show the presence of the numbness. So, doctor, you must be sure what are the exclusive areas. Typically in the palm and the dorsal aspect and also in the palmar aspect of the fingers, you need to be very clear. So, what is the motor supply by the median nerve in the palm? It is the lateral two lumbricals and uh, the lateral two lumbricals when they get paralyzed, when the patient is asked to make a fist, what he has to do basically, whenever you have to make a fist, you need to flex the Flex the distal interphalangeal joint. So, what is the function of lumbrical? Flexion at the metacarpo and extension at the interphalangeal. So, you can't be able to, if the lumbrical is affected, what will happen? Huh? Reverse should happen. Eh? There will be there is no flexion at the metacarpophalangeal. Uh, there is no flexion at the metacarpophalangeal. So, that is the reason what will happen? The two fingers. Which fingers? Index and middle are the ones which will uh, not be able to flex at the 
metacarpophalangeal joint because of the paralysis of the lumbricals and they stand out in prominence. So like, uh, who is that? 007. So it remains, uh, it, they will point out that pointing index. So that is a problem in the case because of the lumbrical problem because of which there is inability to, inability to flex at the metacarpo phalangeal joint is the underlying problem if the lumbricals got paralyzed. So the lateral aspect of the palm, the palmar side of the lateral three and half fingers and the dorsal side of the index middle finger and one half of the ring finger. So they are the typical areas which are innervated by the median nerve. Now what, where do you see injury to the median nerve doctor? It is passing very close to the cubital fossa. Right? So, supracondylar fracture of the humerus, any carpal tunnel syndrome or uh, sometimes there can be entrapment neuropathies because it is passing between Tora Bora muscle compartments of various muscles, Pronita, teres and all. So, they all can cause median nerve injury. Whenever median nerve injury is there, there is a loss of pronation loss of pronation, opposition of the thumb and flexion of the lateral two interphalangeal joints and impairment of the medial two interphalangeal joints flexion is all typically what you come across. And also the thenar eminence, it becomes flattened. So with the flattening of the thenar eminence, with the straightening of the fingers, it looks like an ape. Ape's hand is like that. It's more easy to give a shake hand to an ape than to human beings probably. Because it is all flat. So there is nothing, uh, no bumps or no second uh, thoughts uh, about giving a shake hand. So, ape thumb deformity, pointing index, they are the things which you classically come across with the median nerve. So doc, we are done with the second high yield topic.